What's up, Internet? Current 1776 here with another video for you. My truck's here, right? Got the hood up, okay? No problems. There's no issues. I do need to you know, do some work on my brakes, though. So that's for another day. I'm just going to do a little upgrade here on the uh, Ultimate Bug Out vehicle. Now, in my past video where I was showing my rack system and my deck system and my uh, roof, uh, roof nest that goes up on top, there was quite a few comments in there about why would I use a modern vehicle for a bug out vehicle? What about EMPs and things like that? You got a point. I mean, you do have a point. Electronic fuel injection. It's not carbureted. A rotor button and points and spark plugs and a carburetor and all that. I get that, okay? Electronic fuel injection. It's got computers in it that run everything. Yeah, an EMP or CME would cause problems with old Reba here. But I got news for you. You don't have to have a old vehicle all decked out to be a bug out vehicle nowadays, okay? There's a solution to protect all the electronics in your modern vehicle. Did you know that? Well, I'm fixing to tell you about it here in a minute. But first, let's discuss what is an EMP and what actually happens during an EMP. I mean, what, what exactly happens to electronics? How does it all work? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, I'm not a scientist. I'm not an electrical engineer or anything like that. I have done some studying on it. And I'm just gonna share what I've learned in my way, okay? So it's gonna be very layman's terms, if you will. So let's just say, hopefully this never happens, obviously, but let's just say a uh, an, an atomic bomb, nuclear warhead of some sort is detonated above the surface of Kansas, okay? Right, basically center of the United States. If that were to happen, the entire United States, portions of Mexico and portions, maybe all of Canada will be affected by a, a EMP. So during the explosion, gamma rays are gonna hit the atmosphere and there's gonna be three things that happens and they call it an E1, an E2, and an E3. So when those photons and protons are just running wild, if you will, in the atmosphere, it's going to create electrons and it's gonna be massive. I mean, basically you're charging the atmosphere with electrons. And this spike of electrons is what they call E1. Now this is the killing spike for electronics. So this spike in electrons happens in five billionths of a second, okay? Five billionths of a second, the atmosphere is saturated, fully charged with electrons, and that phase, E1, is over in one microsecond. After one microsecond to one second, so is e, the E2 phase, from one microsecond to one second uh, is complete saturation. So like, of course, you know, we've got a wave, right? So as we're going, say happens in Kansas, as we're going north, south, east, and west, in about a total of one second is the E2 phase. It's complete total saturation of electrons in the atmosphere. And then the E3 phase of this is um, at one second, and it could last for a couple hours. And that's when the atmosphere is completely charged, it stays charged, and it's slowly dropping in charge, right? So over time, several hours is, is this phase. And a lot of people are like, well, you know, what if there's multiple bombs? So, you know, there's, there's a nuclear explosion and then a couple minutes later, there's another. And then 20 minutes later, there's another. You don't experience the E1 and the E2 phase anymore. It goes directly to E3 because the, the atmosphere is already charged. It can't charge anymore. But nuke goes off and EMP happens. And then five minutes later, another nuke goes off. It's going to be directed right into the E3 stage because the atmosphere is charged. And then a CME, a coronal mass ejection, a massive solar flare, you don't experience the E1 and E2 phase. It just directly goes into E3. So what really does all this mean? Current 1776 terms, redneck terms. Here we go. So imagine your electronics, imagine the power lines coming out of a power plant. Imagine all the power distribution centers, all the wires, all the transformers, every, everything electronic. Imagine those as being sponges. And those sponges carry their normal voltage and their normal amperage and all that stuff for normal use, right? So imagine it as a sponge. We dump a giant pool on all these sponges. What are they gonna do? They're gonna start absorbing them up more than they normally do, right? So <laughs> I, I don't know as to, Best way to put it, but just think of it like that, okay? You got sponges out there. You got conductors out there, right? If you dump a metric ton of water at it at one time, it's going to soak it up and it's going to take those wires and all those things above their capacity that they normally do. 
Makes sense. In the E1 and E2 phase from detonation to one second, it's a DC current, just complete saturation, direct saturation of electrons into the atmosphere and into all the sponges, right? Your electronics and your wiring. In the E3 phase, you have a reverberation, you know, like waves bouncing off the atmosphere and the earth and atmosphere and earth. At that point, the DC current actually creates an AC current, okay? So all this happens at the one second mark from detonation. So basically what that causes is a complete overload of all your electronics, the grid, whatever, and things start, you know, getting fried. They're done. Unless you're prepared for it. And there's actually a company out there that makes devices. They make over 40 different devices and they got more coming for all sorts of things, including a modern vehicle. EMP Shield. So this company makes devices for pretty much everything or anything electronic to protect it during an EMP or a CME and even lightning strikes. So what's the difference between this and like a normal like surge protector type thing? Basically that's what it is. You get a surge that comes in, right? Well, what makes this different? Well, this can handle the EMP surges. Like I said, that, that mess is fast, dude. These guys got it figured out where they can shunt that, kind of souped up word for short it. They can short that spike and that current to ground and it does not affect your electronics that this is connected to. This one's obviously for a vehicle, a modern vehicle. I mean, you think about it. You think about all the people that are now getting into fully electric vehicles, right? Something like this will protect that vehicle in the event of an EMP, CME, or lightning strikes. Cheap insurance. This versus thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of damage, yo. So EMP Shield has actually been building devices for uh, for government agencies and stuff here um, for for several years now, due to an executive order from the president to basically get prepared for you know major power situations due to nuclear strikes and things like that. So these guys got it figured out, uh, fully tested, um, pass all it exceeds all of the DoD requirements and fully tested by Key, Keystone Labs, like the premier testing facility um, in the US. So very, very good stuff. I do not know what's inside this box nor exactly how it works, but it works according to Keystone and the DOD. It freaking works. So the mil spec testing requirements that devices like this have to be able to do is take 5,000 amps, okay? That's your current. Take 5,000 amps and short it. And it's got to be able to do that from conductor to conductor, conductor to ground, neutral to ground, conductor to ground. I think that I already said that. Anyway, short all that stuff in 20 billionths of a second to pass mil spec requirements. So EMP Shields devices exceed that. They can do over 5,000 amps in less than half a nanosecond. That's like 500 trillionths or something like that of a second. 500 trillionths of a second. So it blows that requirement out of the water. It senses that surge so fast that it can short it and it can continue to do so as it keeps building. Remember, it's a sponge, right? So it shorts it. I don't know however much time goes by, but you know the air's charged, the atmosphere's charged. Those amperages, voltages start going up. Boom, it shunts it. It keeps protecting your electronics and they make these things for your house they make them for your car they make portable ones for your rv systems they make them for generators they make them for all sorts of things right <laughs> telling you cheap insurance so in an emp event when it comes to a vehicle the chassis ends up with the potential as opposed to the battery and basically it's a magic box y'all <laughs> and it's real easy to hook up the vehicle one all you've got is three wires right You've got a red wire that goes to the positive terminal of your battery. You've got a black wire that goes to the negative terminal of your battery. And then you got a green wire that you, you put to your chassis or to ground um, of the chassis of your vehicle. And that's it. The box here comes with really strong Velcro um, and adhesive here. So you can just stick this directly to your firewall or anywhere else inside your vehicle. You wanna be able to see your light here so you know that it is connected and it is working. It's as simple as that. If, if you can loosen a nut and put a wire on and tighten it back up, you can install this. 
And that's literally it, guys. I know it's kind of anticlimactic because it's not like I can I can create an EMP to test this or anything like that. There's tons of data that you can get on their website about all the testing that they've done. These guys got it figured out. They've got a guarantee on it. Matter of fact, for like, if 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 this gets struck by lightning, it basically kamikazes itself. That's how it protects things. So you don't have to just completely buy a new one. You send this back with $50, they send you a brand new one. That's pretty freaking awesome. And that goes for the home, that goes for whatever. As far as EMPs and spikes and stuff like that, that may, heck, could, could happen even without an EMP. There could be a problem, you know, with the power grid that's coming to your house for some reason. Um, this will take multiple, multiple, multiple hits of EMP or spikes and stuff like that and handle it. 50 bucks, send it back. They send you a brand new one, no questions asked. If it gets struck by lightning, yeehaw. So that's it for the video, guys. So everybody that says you can't have a modern vehicle with modern electronics and all that as a bug out vehicle, that's nonsense. Well, <laughs> EMP shield, handled. You can drive around in your jalopy. I'm gonna be cruising in a modern vehicle with all the modern conveniences because I'm protected with the EMP shield. Yeehaw. I'll see y'all on the next video. Let me get this thing stuck in my truck. Stuck in my truck. Gotta grab me some tools so I can hook it up. Yeah.